Hello everyone, welcome back. In this presentation, we will focus on tuple relational calculus, some example queries. We have seen tuple relational calculus elaborately in the previous lecture and we have understood how an expression in tuple relational calculus looks like. We have also seen bound variables and free variables. We have seen what is a formula, how a formula in tuple relational calculus is constructed. We have seen about atoms and predicate calculus. With that knowledge, we are stepping into example queries. Let's take an example table and I shall explain you how a tuple looks like and how tuple relational calculus actually works. Suppose if this is the instructor table that we have taken. This instructor table contains ID, name, department name and salary. Only four columns are there. This is just for an example. Now tuple relational calculus is going to retry tuple by tuple. We know a tuple is a row. So this entire stuff is a tuple. Say if we are going to retrieve all the values from this table, all rows, all columns. In that case, we are going to issue a query which retrieves all the tuples in the table. So the first tuple is retrieved, then it checks with the second tuple, then third tuple and so on and so forth. So that we will be able to get all the tuples. And we know this is actually a non-procedural language where we are going to say what is required and we are not going to mention how it is retrieved. So a query looks like this. This is the set of all tuples such that the predicate or the condition for this tuple is true. If this condition is true, then we will be able to retrieve all the tuples. In this case, if I want all the tuples to be retrieved, then what I can do? And we know this is the instructor relation. So I'm going to retrieve all the tuples such that salary is greater than 1. In this case, salary is greater than 1 is matching for all the tuples. So we will be getting all the records in this table. Remember, Tuple relational calculus works on tuples, I mean the rows. Basically, a table or a relation is composed of rows and columns. In tuple relational calculus, we are going to retrieve the records based on rows, I mean tuples. And we also have seen the basics of tuple relational calculus elaborately in the previous lecture. In this lecture, we will start solving some problems. If you want some clarity about the basics, I request you to watch my previous lecture and proceed with this current lecture. Now let's focus on example queries. Question number one. Find the ID, name, department name, salary for instructors whose salary is greater than $80,000. Now if you see here, we have taken an example table where that example table had only four columns. What are they? ID, name, department name and salary. So we are going to retrieve all the values from the table. I mean all the columns from the table where the salary of the instructor is greater than 80,000. Now we need to understand one thing here, whether we are going to retrieve all the columns or selected columns. We are going to retrieve all the columns and the output is going to be rows only because we are dealing with tuple relational calculus. So we are going to deal with rows that has all columns. So the output for this question will be the set of all tuples T such that this tuple belongs to the instructor table because which table we are dealing here? Instructor table and we want all the columns from this instructor table. The only condition is that tuple salary value should be greater than 80,000. So we are going to retrieve all tuples such that these tuples one by one we are going to retrieve, right? All these tuples are belonging to instructor table or instructor relation. And the only condition is the tuple whatever we are taking, right? That tuple's salary value, this is the attribute, right? T is the tuple and salary is the attribute on that tuple T. Now that tuple salary attribute should be greater than 80,000. So this is an example query in tuple relational calculus. Can you see here? This is a formula. T belongs to instructor. And we have a connective here. This is AND. And we have another formula where this is the tuple variable. Can you see here? This is a tuple variable and this is the attribute. So this is a column in the table. And we have the comparison operator here and we have a constant here because we are referring the value with the constant. I'll just bring in a slide which we have seen in the previous presentation. Can you see here? We have formula like this. This T belongs to instructor. And we have formulas like this also. S belongs to R. In the example that we have taken, t belongs to r. And we have seen a tuple variable s of x where x is an attribute. s is the tuple that we are referring. And we also have used some comparison operators 
and we can also use the right hand side with another tuple variable u of y means u is the tuple variable and y is the attribute and the first example what we have seen is matching with this because this is the tuple variable and these are all the comparison operators and we used a constant $80,000. So this is exactly this. We are done with example number one. Let's move on to example number two where we are going to find the instructor ID for each instructor with a salary greater than $80,000. How the second example is differing from first example. The first example we have retrieved all the columns, right? But here we are going to retrieve only ID column from instructor table. So instructor ID only we are going to retrieve and what is the condition? Are we going to retrieve all the instructor IDs? No, we are going to retrieve the instructor ID for each instructor with a salary greater than 80,000. In the previous case we retrieved all columns and that's why we directly use this T. But here we are going to use a specified column. So we are going to define a tuple variable here. So the tuple variable may be S and we are going to use an existential quantifier. I will explain this when we see the output. So the syntax will be like this. There exists a tuple T that belongs to the relation R, then this predicate should be true. If this predicate is true, then we are going to retrieve all the tuples satisfying this predicate. No worries, I will explain you. So let's see the output for this. So we are going to retrieve all the tuples because this is tuple relational calculus and we are not going to use T here like in the previous case because we are not going to directly retrieve all columns rather we are going to retrieve only id column so for this id column i am going to define a tuple variable s there exists a tuple variable s that belongs to the same instructor relation such that the tuple whatever we are retrieving this tuples id and this s id can you see here the tuples id and this s id are the same so from this we are going to retrieve all the instructor ids is that condition over? No, we have the important condition where salary is greater than 80,000. So whatever the tuple variable we have defined, that tuple variable salary column should be greater than 80,000. So what we are doing? So we are going to find or retrieve all the instructor IDs such that the instructor ID on this tuple and the instructor ID on this tuple variable is the same. Also the salary attribute should be greater than 80,000. So this is the answer for example number two. So why we have defined a tuple variable here? Because we are going for a specific column. Let's move on to example number three. Example number three, find the names of all instructors whose department is in the Watson building. Just pause this video for a while and think how many relations are involved here. A relation is a table. So certainly we have instructor relation. Also we are dealing with the department relation. We know the basic instructor related stuff are dealt in the instructor relation and department related information like the department code, the department name, the head of the department, the department building, all department related stuff will be in department relation. Since we are not given with the exact table, this is merely an assumption. We can write any logical expression or any logical tuple relational calculus expression matching this example or for this question. But we need to ensure the logic is applicable. So let's solve this now. So we are going to retrieve the names of all instructors. So this instructor relation may have n columns, but we are going to retrieve only name column, right? So obviously we are going to define a tuple variable. And the department is in the Watson building. And again, department relation may have n columns, wherein we are going to refer a specific column, the building. So we are going to use another tuple variable for referring this building. So what we need to do is first we need to retrieve all the tuples from this instructor relation and we are going to define a tuple variable on this instructor relation such that the names of the instructor relation in the tuple and the names in the instructor relation of the tuple variable that we are defining are same. At the same time, we are going to refer the department table where the tuple variables department are the same and the building is Watson building. No worries, I will explain now. So we are going to retrieve the set of all tuples such that we are defining a tuple variable yes because we are not going to retrieve all columns. So I am going to create a tuple variable yes. There exists yes which belongs to the relation instructor such that the tuple that we are going to retrieve that tuple's name and this variable s name 
I mean the name attribute in the s tuple variable if both are same. And now we are concerned about the department relation. So the tuple whatever we are going to retrieve that is also going to have the department and this department should be in this department, right? So we are going to define another tuple variable u. There exists u that belongs to the department relation where this department u of department is equal to s of department, right? Because we are defined a tuple variable s yes, and this u of building that u's building is Watson. So what do you mean by this? So we are going to retrieve the tuples. There exists a tuple variable which belongs to the instructor relation where the name in the tuple and the name in the tuple variable attribute are the same and there exists u belongs to the department relation where the department name on this u that tuple variable which we have defined is equal to the name in this tuple variable yes also the building of the department is watson i hope things are clear to you now let's move on to example number four the question is find the set of all courses taught in fall 2009 semester the spring 2010 semester or both so what do we mean by this we are going to find the set of all courses where all courses be fall 2009, spring 2010 or both. If this is relational algebra expression, then we use union to perform this job. First, we retrieve records related to fall 2009. Then we retrieve records pertaining to spring 2010 and then we perform union. And obviously union eliminates duplicates as well. So how many relations are involved here? We are going to talk about a class or a section where in that section we are going to retrieve the set of all courses taught in this semester or in this semester or both of the semester. So the answer for this example is we are going to retrieve the set of all tuples. Again, not all the columns, rather the set of all courses. So we are going to define a tuple variable S that belongs to section or class relation. So I'm using section relation here such that the course ID on this T and the course ID on this S are the same and the semester can you see here and this S semester and the attribute semester on this S is equal to fall which is this and the year on this S is 2009. So first condition we have given the semester is fall 2009. Are we going to do and or 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 so we are using or so I am going to define another tuple variable U for this particular column. So I am going to define another tuple variable u that belongs to the same section or class where this u's course id and this t's course id are the one and the same and this u's semester is equal to spring which is this and this u's year is 2010 and this u's year is 2010. So this relational algebra expression retrieves the set of all courses taught in the semester fall and the year 2009 or the semester spring and the year 2010 are both. In example number 5, we will just modify this as AND. So example number 5 is, find only those course ID values for courses that are offered in both fall 2009 and spring 2010 semesters. So can you see here how this example 5 differs from example 4? In example 4, either fall 2009 or spring 2010. But in example number 5, both fall 2009 and spring 2010. So it's simple. The only difference between this answer and this answer is going to be instead of this or we are going to use and. So what's the logic? We are going to retrieve the set of all tuples such that there exists yes. This S belongs to section where the course ID of this S and the course ID of this T are one and the same. And this S semester is fall and this S year is 2009. So which is this part? And we are bringing this AND here and we are repeating the same syntax but we are defining another tuple variable U. Because one tuple variable is for dealing with fall 2009 and another tuple variable is for dealing with spring 2010. So we are defining another tuple variable U which belongs to the same class or section where this U's course ID and this tuple's course ID are one and the same. Where this U semester is spring that is U of semester is spring. And this U's year is 2010, which is U of year is equal to 2010. It need not be the case that this S semester is equal to fall and S year is equal to 2009. In single condition also, we may give like S of semester is equal to fall 2009 if the table actually contains both semester and year in a single column. But in this example, what we are assuming is the semester and year are different columns in the section relation. 
So this is example number five. Now we are going to see another example with a small modification with example four and five. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in example number five again and the solution for example number five and we'll see example number six, the last example. Find all the courses taught in fall 2009 semester but not in spring 2010 semester. See example 4 and example 5 are differing in only one aspect or and. In example 6 what we are dealing is we are going to find all courses taught in fall 2009 semester but not in spring 2010. So example 4 we dealt with fall 2009 or spring 2010. In example 5 we dealt fall 2009 and spring 2010. In example 6 fall 2009 but not in spring 2010. And we are going to make a small change in this query. Just pause this video for a while and think where will be that change. And the answer for this query is going to be the change is going to be here. That is there exists U that belongs to this particular portion because we don't want spring 2010. We'll just negate this. That's negation for this entire stuff will give you the answer for the course is taught in fall 2009 but not in spring 2010 semester and other stuff remains the same. And that's it guys. I hope now you will be able to write the tupled relational calculus expressions. When you write a tupled relational calculus expression, please be noted that our logic is perfect. If a table is given and if we are required to write a relational algebra expression, we need not go for any assumptions. In this case, we have assumed that semester is a different column and year is a different column. In case question is given with semester and year in the same column, then write the expression accordingly. So we have completed tupled relational calculus, the formal definition and example queries. In the next presentation, let's focus on domain relational calculus. I'll see you in the next presentation and thank you for watching.